Here's a more difficult example where we have a second order differential equation, zero initial conditions, and this transfer function, and we're going to apply a step input. Now we're actually pretty familiar with this sort of system because if we complete the square, notice that this gives us a uh, sigma is equal to minus 1 and an omega d which is equal to 2. And what do we do with that information? Well, this tells us that we're going to have a step response with a final value of 1. So it's going to head towards 1. And basically, what we already know what x of t is going to look like. Start with zero initial conditions. And it's going to oscillate a little bit and head towards 1. And the exponential envelope for this has a time constant of 1. That comes from sigma. And then the sinusoid, uh, I've probably drawn this a little bit uh, inaccurately, but the sinusoid period is 2 pi over omega d, where 2 pi over omega d is just going to give us about 3.14. So we already have an expectation on how to solve this. The next question is, how do we actually do this using Laplace transforms? The transform table is shown here, so what we immediately realize is that we are going to have to match up with these terms here, e to the negative at, a decaying exponential with sinusoids inside. And there are actually two of them, a cosine and a sine, that uh, could possibly appear. So we'll write this as a times s plus 1 over s plus 1 squared plus 2 squared, plus b times the sinusoid which is going to be 2 divided by s plus 1 squared plus 2 squared, plus uh, we have our 1 over s term, which we'll just write as c over s. Now the easy one to find is c, where we multiply both sides of the equation by s, and then we plug in s going to 0. What that does is it's going to cause both of the a and b terms to disappear, because when we multiply by s and set to 0, those are going to just go away. And so we'll just end up with c is equal to this part, where the, when we multiply by s, this is going to uh, cause the uh, s in the denominator to cancel out. So we just end up with 5 over 5, in other words, 1. Once we know c equals 1, then we're in position to find a and b. And there are a variety of methods available and a particularly easy one that I like is just to plug in s equals 1 and minus 1. So if you plug in 1, notice that you'll get, uh, uh, on the left-hand side, you'll get 1 times 5 divided by 8, in other words, 5 eighths, is equal to a times this quantity. This is going to be 2 divided by 8, so that's a times 2 eighths plus b, again multiplied by 2 eighths, uh, plus c, which is 1 over 1, in other words, 8 eighths. So we discover that a plus b has to be equal to uh, 5 eighths minus 8 eighths, that's three, negative 3 eighths. So we end up with negative 3 eighths here, and I believe we have a 2 multiplied by both a and b divided by 8. The 8's are going to cancel, so we just end up with a plus b is equal to negative 3 halves. The next part is to plug in minus 1, which if you plug in here, that's going to give us 5 over uh, 5 plus 1 minus 2. That's going to be 5 fourths. Uh, this is going to give us a minus sign. And then when we plug that in, that's going to give us a a times the uh, minus 1 is actually going to cause us to cancel. And then the b gets multiplied by 2 divided by 4 plus c over s. That's going to be uh, negative 1. So that means that uh, we're going to get negative 1 fourth, if we move the 1 over, is equal to b times 2 over 4. In other words, b is just going to be equal to negative 1 half. Once we know b is equal to negative 1 half, 
then we know what a has to be equal to because a plus b, uh, which we said before, is actually going to be equal to negative 3 halves. So that means that um, a has to be equal to negative 1. So if we put this together, we see that x of t has to be equal to negative 1 e to the negative 1t cosine 2t plus negative 1 half sine of 2t plus c, which is 1. So this matches up with our expectations. Let's continue this example now applying a sinusoidal input, which has this transform. The Laplace transform table tells us we're going to have several terms. We're going to have a, another decaying exponential with a sinusoid uh, inside that envelope, uh, where we'll have an a and a b. And then we'll also have terms associated with this s squared plus 1 squared. And so we'll, we'll have a c and a d. I'm not going to go through all the steps except to say that we can do the normal partial fraction expansion and summarize the math like this. We can plug in different values, multiply by different quantities, plug in different values, and this is what we end up with. Just to summarize both of these examples, here are the uh, steps that we did and also how we actually solved for A and B.